Hello and welcome! In this video I want to show you how you can 3D print large panels with multiple colors. It will be big and it will cast light. And the cool thing is that it's working with every 3D printer where you can change the color of the filament during the printing. So what's the idea? Imagine you print a plate and every couple of layers you change the filament to another color. Of course now the surface only shows the last color you used. But when you now carve parts out of the surface to a specific depth, you reveal the other colors. Tada! Multicolor print. But don't worry, we will not carve, we will use free open source software Blender, GIMP and Inkscape to do the carving for us before we start printing. This is the plan. We take a picture with just a few colors and if possible large areas of these colors. Anything with gradients or fine lines will not work. I use the cover image of the current martial arts EP. Check out the link to the music in the description. First, we will separate the colors into different pictures. Vectorize them in Inkscape and then carve the picture into the plate in Blender. As a bonus, I will show you how I built a large colored light panel by designing a frame in Blender and using Puzzle Your Print Blender add-on to make the large prints possible. First, we go into GIMP. Here, we will separate the colors. So, choose the Select by Colors button in the top left corner and click on one color. I choose the violet and then cut out the color with Ctrl X and paste it again to have this floating layer. And by pressing the button down here, you make it a real layer and then you repeat that with the other colors. You may want to change the threshold value to the left side that you really get all of this. In addition to white, yellow, purple and black, we also have grey in this picture. Well, but it's so little on the hands, so I added also the grey to the selection of the white colors. In this case I will not separate the black color. This will be the top layer of the print, so we don't need that to be cut in into the panel. Now we have all colors in separate layers, so we can activate them individually and export them to individual images. So now we just take all three images and copy them into Inkscape. You see they're all over the place. So we take two of those helper lines and then put them into the right spot. So now we select one of the colors and go to Path and Trace Bitmap. We use only the One Scan option and press Refresh. And already we see this is in black and white, the parts we want to have later in purple. So we press OK and here we have our vector version of this color. We will move that to the SVG layer I made to have it more organized and we will repeat this process for the other colors. You will see the brighter the color gets, the more you have to increase the threshold of the brightness. For the white parts, we actually need to put that to 99% to have the tracing work. And when we have all of these, we put them into the SVG layer, make it invisible and delete all the images. So we can save this file as SVG file and this SVG file we can import into Blender. If you want you could also clean up now but I personally prefer to make the cleanup step in Blender because it's way easier to select stuff. So let's go into Blender. Delete what you don't need and then go to File Import SVG. And here we have our objects. You see each of the objects we created in Inkscape is also its own object here in Blender. That will be very helpful. But first let's put in our plate that we will carve in. This is just a plane. I move it a little bit down and put a solidify modifier on this. First let's scale it to the right dimensions. I use Puzzle Your Print and in Puzzle Your Print I put it to a global scale of 10 to work in a range where one blender meter equals one millimeter in reality when I export it later as STL file. I have Puzzle Your Print generate a build volume and I repeat it three times because I'm planning to print this in nine parts. 
So let's put the curler on the left corner and then adjust the size. And of course, apply the scale. Let's make the height of the plate a little bit bigger and let's give one of the curve objects also a solidify modifier. So now it has some thickness. Let's add a boolean to the plate and now we see, oh no, we cannot take paths. So we need to convert them into meshes first. So go F3 and convert to mesh. Still, we have the problem with the uh, ugly geometry, but a cool trick is to use the decimate modifier and put that to planner and that will remove a lot of your problems with the mesh. Now we add again uh, the solidify modifier for this and put in any height, we will fine tune that later. So, and now you see something seemed to be working here, but we are not really sure and it's not looking well. So I show you another trick. Let's disable the solidify and the boolean modifier for once. And then we go into vertex paint, set a color here, purple, and go to paint and set vertex color. And now you will see the trick. If I activate the boolean, the carved parts inherited the colors of the objects so we can draw our real colors and have a better overview and see better what we can do. Let's continue with the yellow one. Yeah, first disable the boolean on the plate of the purple one, that everything goes faster. And then again, we select the yellow one, go into vertex paint, choose a yellow color and activate set vertex colors. So now we have our nice system. One little trick, I recommend using bool tool add-on. Then you can select the object and then the plate and when you press control minus on the numpad, you already have the nice cutout. The add-on will make the boolean modifier and set your color object to boundary. So finally, the white one. The white one is a little bit ugly. Let's go in and clean a little bit up. So there's a lot of small stuff here. In Blender, you select a little piece and you press Ctrl L and everything that's connected to this selected vertex will be selected and you don't miss anything. That's very handy for cleaning up. Um, here in the A, only two vertex were overlapping. So I just needed to find them and then everything was okay again. After cleanup, let's convert again to mesh, put on the decimate again, put on the solidify, and then we do the trick with the bool tools again, select the white object, select the plate, and then press Ctrl minus. And of course, we put in the vertex colors again, and we, and we also put the black vertex colors on the plate, and then we activate, and well, it's not working everywhere can do several things. For example, press the self option. That solves a lot of problems. Then the boolean modifier will also consider self intersection. If that's not helping, also try remove vertex from distance, the old remove doubles, because these meshes always have a lot of doubles when they come out from convert curve to mesh. We have four colors, white, yellow, purple, black. And each color should have at least four layers to have a nice closed surface. In sum, this means 16 layers and I will print with a layer height of 0.3 millimeters. This results in a total plate height of 4.8 millimeters. So, and how deep do we need to cut in? Four layers, 0.3 height for the purple will be 1.2 millimeters. For yellow, we need double of this and for white, triple of the first one. Let's set that in the solidify modifier of each color object. But first, let's deactivate the boolean modifiers that we can work more quickly. 4.8 for the plate, then 1.2 for the purple one, 2.4 for the yellow, and 3.6 for the white one. So here we have our multicolor panel. To cut that into smaller printable parts, I will use Puzzle Your Print. You can find a link to Puzzle Your Print in the description. 
add a planner connector. Let's put them both in first and also activate the stopper option. Uh, but here we see we want it the other way around. We want to have the fine cut on the top and the puzzle pieces on the back of it. That we have less printed lines later in the final image. Then I decided that I want to have two connectors per side for each of the nine panels. So on these sides. And then we apply and here we are. Before you start printing, you should really check in detail what your printer is going to do in the slicer software. In this example, you see how the purple and yellow layers are overlapping. This would force you to have the first layer of the purple be actually yellow or, or you cover up your yellow part. You can compensate that either by increasing the Z scale in the slicer software, but you will have more control if you make the changes in the solidify modifiers of the objects in the blender file and then re-export. And here you see how the printing looks. But if you have that in hand, you should really put that on any lamp because 3D prints on lamps always look gorgeous. So I decided to buy 60 cm by 60 cm light panel. The only question is how we can fixate the print on the lamp. For this purpose, I designed a special frame. But first, let's put in a block in the scale of the light that we have an orientation concerning the scale of everything. The frame design is quite simple. The frame surrounds all the edges of the light and will reach further to the middle of the light plate to hold down the print. Of course, also here I used Puzzle Your Print to cut the frame in half. But I did not want to have the cuts at the same place, so I decided for three cuts instead of only two cuts in the first print. Again here, put in the stopper and turn them around. Then we have the puzzle connectors uh, on the bottom side. Here we also need to think about how we put that all together. So I decided to have the top part removable as one other piece. For this, I will not cut with the planner, but with the stick connector and then I introduce small boolean holes that I can screw that stick together later so we have a fixed connection between the top part and the end part but it's still removable and I can change the image in the middle as often as I want. Also think about hanging the frame. I put this half bagel thing as a boolean here that I can put a wire through and hang it from the wall. And here you see how I put it together. So in here is the final thing. Now it will hang in my room and in a few weeks it will go into the rehearsal room and I make another one for myself. I hope you enjoyed this idea and you will build your own wonderful big light panels or use this multicolor technique to print whatever you like. So as always, enjoy! <laughs>